Hello, I'm Dr. Benito Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is an important one. It's how to achieve thicker, longer, fuller hair with minimal hair fall. What are the common myths and mistakes that we make when it comes to our hair care? What ingredients do we want to look for in our shampoos, conditioners, and leave-in products? We're also going to go into the anatomy of your hair, the structure, and what we're trying to achieve there as well. So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So the structure of hair is divided into three main structures, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. The medulla tends to be in coarse hair, so it's seen in grey hair and in beard hair, but it's not seen in hair, fine hair of children. The medulla may increase hair splitting because it creates a weakness along the hair strand. The cuticle are overlapping scales or overlapping cells. In Asians, it's about six to eight cells of overlapping. In Caucasians, it's less than that. And in African descent hair, it's even less than that, which is why for African descent hair, uh, it's more prone to breakage for this reason. Now, what happens is each of these cells are coated by something called 18-MEA. It's a lipid layer and it makes the hair strand hydrophobic, i.e. you want water to not penetrate into the hair strand because if it does, the hair strand swells. And if it swells between 30 to 70% of the original diameter, it's irreversible. And if it swells more than 80%, the hair splits. So we don't want that. We want to maintain that lipid layer. Unfortunately, the more that we treat the hair and we over-treat the hair, and we use chemicals and we use uh, bleaching and straightening, etc., we are stripping the outer layer of 18-MEA, which is really what's protecting our hair strop up the hair shaft. Now, the cortex is the major part of the hair shaft. And that's what contains the protein and melanin. That's what gives you the color of your hair. So what's the purpose of hair care products and what can they really achieve? So the purpose is to repair any damage from chemicals, from, from coloring or from straightening. We also want to improve hydrophobicity. So we want water not to penetrate into the hair shaft. We want to reduce the negative charge from damaged hair, which happens when bonds break. And we want to reduce friction forces. So this means that less force is needed to comb the hair. This leads to shinier hair, and less damage. So there are six key things to look for in your ideal shampoo. Number one, you want surfactants that will clean the scalp. Number two, you want gentle surfactants because you don't want it to strip the oil from the hair. Number three, you want to reduce scalp diseases such as dandruff, which occurs in 50 to 70% of the population. So you want to use salicylic acid. This will unclog the hair follicles. You want to use actives to give you a healthy scalp such as niacinamide and anti-inflammatory. So a lot of us are itching our scalps. So things like humectants are also very important. You want to prevent contact dermatitis. And so this product is in contact with the scalp skin so you don't want fragrance the shampoo really should be fragrance free and you want to thicken the hair strands and you do this by using hydrolyzed protein i.e protein that are almost broken down into little bits that then penetrate into the hair shaft to help to rebuild it so this product didn't exist which is why i made it for you this is our new hair care range <laughs> i'm so proud of it so this is our thickening shampoo for thinning brittle hair and i put so much into this so get ready starting off with gentle anti-static surfactants so when your hair damages you have negative charge on the hair which is why it leads to um have you noticed that you know if you've over dyed your hair it can feel quite dry and almost a lot of static actually happens as well and so you want anti-static ingredients in your hair care in here, I've also put in glycerin, niacinamide, and vitamin A in order to improve your health of your scalp. If you have healthy scalp skin, you can grow strong hair. If your scalp is dry, irritated, or inflamed, it will grow brittle hair and will break easily and will never really grow long. So it's important to improve the health of the scalp. 
In here, I've also put in tripeptides and I've also put in hydrolyzed protein, so wheat protein, in order to penetrate into the hair shaft and rebuild it from the inside. I put in salicylic acid to remove excess sebum from the scalp. There's gluconolactone in here, which is a PHA for gentle exfoliation of the scalp for, especially if you're getting flaky scalps, this is gonna help with that. And of course, it's fragrance-free, there's no essential oils or denatured alcohol, which was incredibly hard to find in a shampoo. Moving on to conditioners. What is the purpose of a conditioner? It's to reduce frizz, it's to reduce combing force so there's less breakage happening, it's to reduce the negative charge from damaged bleached hair, it's to restore hydrophobicity of the hair shaft. So you don't want water to be to be absorbed into the hair shaft and for hair swelling to happen, which then splits the hair. And you want different molecular weight peptides. You want smaller molecular weight peptides to penetrate into the hair shaft and larger molecular weight peptides to sit on the outside and help fill the gaps where the cuticle is struggling. Conditioners also improve the shine of hair. And so when you smooth the outside of the of cuticles, uh, light will reflect evenly. And when light reflects evenly, you get shine. If your cuticles are frayed, then light will diffuse in different directions and your hair will look dull. So in our cuticle repair conditioner, I've put in triglycerides, shea butter, dimethicone, and isodecane in order to reduce friction and frizz. I've put in sweet almond oil and fats in order to mimic 18 MEA. I've put in peptides with different molecular weights to penetrate the inside and to also work on the hair outer cuticle as well. I've also put in ingredients to reduce static and to increase shine and smoothness of your hair. So the purpose of your leave-in conditioner is actually quite similar to the conditioner that you wear in the, in the shower. The difference is you want it to be lighter and absorbed quicker. And the purpose is actually to protect you from heat and environmental stresses. So in your leave-in conditioner, so this is your protect and shield conditioner, I've put in humectants in order to protect it from any damage. I've put in humectants to add moisture without heaviness. I've put in panthenol in order to improve elasticity without breaking the hair strand. I've put in isodecane in order to smooth the hair and prevent split ends. Now, a common myth I see is that silicones are bad for hair. Silicones are inert polymers that protect you from heat styling. Dimethicone, for example, is used a lot when it comes to hair care because of its entropy. It absorbs easily into the hair shaft to protect it. Silicones also improve shine of hair. You get even reflection of light. It also helps to prevent split ends and reduces force needed to comb hair. In addition, as we talked about how important hydrophobicity is for hair, dimethicone is hydrophobic. It actually prevents water from penetrating into the hair shaft and leading to swelling and then splitting. Moving on to hair oil. Is it a yes or is it a no? So I think there's a lot of myths when it comes to hair oiling. What you really want is a light silicone based hair oil that will reduce frizz, increase shine and protect you from heat styling. If you go with raw oils, for example, coconut oil, it's often very heavy and it means you need to wash your hair a few times in order to get rid of that coconut oil. And that can, that can be a problem because the more you're washing your hair, actually the more you're weakening your hair. So you don't want something that's gonna be so hard to wash out of the hair. You want something quite light that you can even reapply once a day and will protect you for that day, but without feeling heavy. I would also say don't make the mistake of putting your hair oil on your scalp because of malassezia. It's a microbe that feeds on oil and sebum to inflame the scalp, lead to dandruff. You think you've got dry, flaky scalp, but actually it's because of the oil. Uh, which has lead to dandruff. And so 50 to 70% of the population, you know, the majority of us have dandruff. So it's not something we want to exacerbate. So with our hair oil, this is our strand strengthening oil. It is specifically, I'll show you what it's like when you put it on. It is specifically for your hair itself. And I will put this in every day 
even when I go to the gym, especially when I go to the gym because I run um, and your hair is flicking from side to side and that is trauma to the hair. That's encouraging split ends. So if I do this, especially to the ends of my hair, I don't know if you can see, I just make sure that my hair is as healthy as it can be on the way out <laughs> and on the way back in again. And it's very light, so it doesn't feel like you've put in anything too heavy into your hair and no one's going to know that you've got hair oil in and that's really what I wanted to formulate when it came to our strand strengthening oil something that I could wear every day no one's going to know that I've got oil in my hair it doesn't feel heavy it doesn't have any smell it's fragrance free there's no essential oils in this of course and it protects you from heat styling so for example I've straightened my hair today and I've got my hair oil in before I straightened my hair and so you know it protects you from everything including the wind uv radiation literally everything one of the products i love the most probably from this whole hair range that i wear daily would be the strand strengthening oil my second favorite product would probably be my leave-in conditioner um, and actually i put the two in together and when i have a shower i actually wrap my hair in a microfiber towel with those two products in my hair and my hair turns into silk as soon as i let my microfiber towel go, it does feel so soft compared to if I don't do that. So the ingredients I put into our strand strengthening oil, I put in six oils in plus silicone. So I've got almond oil, uh, coconut, argan, jojoba, castor oil, sweet almond oil, and these are all carrier oils. None of these are essential oils plus cyclopentasiloxane, which smooths the hair and prevents split ends. When you're looking for hair oils, just avoid essential oils. And often they won't tell you it's an essential oil. So the words to look out for would be lavender oil, uh, bergamot, um, geranium oil, sandalwood oil. These are all skin sensitizers. So I don't even mind you wearing those if your hair is very short and it's not gonna touch your back and you wanna wear it from here to here, that's fine. But I just wouldn't put it on your scalp and I wouldn't put it on hair that's gonna touch your body or your back or your arms, you know? Um, that can that can irritate you over, over years. Yeah, it's just something to be aware of. Moving on to our Anagen Boost Hair Tonic. So number one, this is a water-based product, which is very important when, if it's going to touch the scalp. Often hair growth tonics don't tend to have ingredients in the therapeutic index, or they just tend to be oils, which is a mistake. Oils are only for the hair strand, not the scalp. So in this product, I've put in niacinamide, I've put in amino acids and acetyl tetrapeptide 3. This works on DHT modulation, which reduces 5-alpha reductase. In here, there's also scutellaria extract, which reduces inflammation of the scalp and helps to regenerate cells, and arginine, which helps improve blood flow to the scalp, which helps with hair growth. Plus in here, there's wheat germ extract, which helps to give you thicker hair from the follicle itself. So how do you optimally wash your hair? So first thing is I would recommend the sandwich method, where you basically apply conditioner to the ends, so for example, I would apply our cuticle repair conditioner to my hair shaft first. Then I would apply our thickening shampoo specifically to the scalp. I'd massage this into the scalp. I really want those actives to get into the scalp. And then I would rinse them both off because the, when I'm rinsing off the surfactant off my hair strand, I don't want to be removing my 18 MEA fats. What I want is to protect it with the conditioner. I would then go back in with my cuticle repair conditioner. And if you have African descent hair, this is a good time to detangle the hair, section the hair, you can then plait the hair and then rinse it out while it's still in plaits. And if you have Asian hair or Caucasian hair, then you can just rinse it off at this point. And then as you leave, we then do the post shower hair care. So when you leave, there are three products that you want to be using, especially if you're trying to grow your hair. So number one, you want to use your hair tonic, antigen boost tonic on the scalp itself. Then you want to use your protect and shield leave-in conditioner. So for example, if you have plaited your hair and you have African descent hair, you can, re you can literally apply your mask to the actual plaits itself and then a couple of pumps of your hair oil. 
If you have Asian or Caucasian hair, you would do a similar thing, but without the plaits. So you would put your Anagen Boost Tonic specifically onto the scalp itself. You'd put your leave-in conditioning mask and you'd put in your strand strengthening oil. What I tend to do with my daughter who has very long hair, her hair is about a meter long, um, I will plait it at this point. So one long plait uh, right to the end and then I'll put it into a microfiber towel. So then she's getting the heat from her own scalp and the, and the occlusion from the microfiber towel to allow these ingredients to penetrate into the cuticles and into the hair shaft to repair it. And if you do that even once, you will notice straight away, as soon as you remove your microfiber towel, that any bleached hair or hair that's been over-treated is going to feel so much softer, so much more manageable by following these steps and using these key actives. If you have used my hair range, can you write down below what you thought about it? I'd love to hear your views and how you used it. How did you customize the Dr. V hair range for your hair? And if you could describe that for us below, that'd be amazing so we could all learn from each other. Um, and I will be in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do want to get your hands on our hair care range, you can get it from skincarebydrv.com. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.